Good morning, St. James, and welcome to this third Sunday in Advent. Um, you uh, are encouraged to turn to page 355 in your Book of Common Prayer or page 2 of your bulletin as we begin our service. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. And because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. Hear the words of the prophet Isaiah. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. In God's time of joy, all sorrow and sighing will leave us. As we wait for God's time, in faith we light the candles of hope, peace, and joy. Good morning, St. James and visitors. A reading from Zephaniah. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time and I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home, at the time when I gather you, for I will make you renowned and praised among all peoples of the earth, when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. Here ends the reading. Please join me in saying aloud Canticle 9, the first song of Isaiah, as printed in the online bulletin or found on page 86 in your Book of Common Prayer. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion. Ring out your joy, for the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Paul to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, 
but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers who warned you to flee from the wrath to come, bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as a father, our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is laying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then shall we do? In reply to them, he said, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what should we do? He said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be. Praise to you, O Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, St. James. On this third Sunday of Advent, I'm standing next to our beautiful Advent wreath here in our worship space to remind us that we've already lit the candle of hope and peace, and today we, uh, we light the candle of joy. And I know you've already heard this colic for today, but I want to read a portion of this colic today, and I want us to, uh, to filter uh, the words of John through this colic. So here we go. Uh, this is what the colic says. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. And because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. We just got through asking God to come among us mightily to save us from our sins. We see John in this role of the Old Testament prophets what I talked about last week, if you're with us. If not, John has come to us from the desert, in the desert, in this liminal space on the outer edge of, of, uh, of civilization, in the wilderness, and he proclaims to the people and baptizes in a name, in, in, a, in a, a baptism of repentance. Um, he's, he is paving the way for Jesus and he's preparing the people. Today we see John's actions as, as preparing the people. How do we know this? First, in the line of the Old Testament prophets, he says, you brood of vipers. He calls them out. You brood of vipers, you snakes that are trying to slither off from your responsibilities. 
and it strikes a chord with these people. We don't know why these people came out in the middle of the, of the wilderness. And it says in the wilderness, we don't know why they came out in the middle of the wilderness, left their comfortable homes, and uh, came out into the wilderness to, uh, to be talked to this way, to be reprimanded this way, and then to, uh, to be um, uh, uh, baptized in the Jordan River with a baptism of repentance. We don't know this. What we do know is John is calling these people to a life other than the life they've lived. Uh, the Greek word that he used is metanoia. I don't normally use Greek, but today metanoia. And it literally means to turn away from to change your direction, to turn away from. And, this, and Luke is good about using this word, this, this Greek word of turning it away in the form of repentance, it's the way we translate it, repentance. Meaning that, that he's calling them to turn away from their way of life. And we see this question asked, and I believe for us today, right now, this is the question. What should we do? What should we do? We first see the people asking, what should we do? And John answers them. Then the task collectors say, well, what should we do? Teacher, what should we do? And then the Roman soldier said, and what should we do? And John is very clear on all three, exactly what they need to do. Now, I want to, I want to tell you what their motivation is. John says the ax is at the root of the of the tree at the root of the tree and so if you're a, if you're a people group that that um, holds your heritage up um, very high and you say um, I am I am from the tribe of Benjamin I am from the tribe of Judah I am from the tribe of whatever I am from the tribe of Hurst um, whatever that tribe is if somebody says that that axe is at the root that's that means Somebody with an axe is pulling it down, about to cut your family tree down. That's what that means. And these people hear this and they go, what can we do? It's not like we haven't seen this before, folks. If you've read Jonah, you see that Jonah comes in and he says, y'all need to, God's going to smite you. He's going he's to take you out. And they all say, what can we do? What should we do? And they pour ashes on their head and they, they wear sack. Even the animals wear sackcloth. This is not new. This, this understanding that every so often God hits the reset button with the prophets and, and, um, and, and asks the people to turn away from their sins, to turn away from uh, their, their wicked ways and to move back into right, right uh, living with God. And today he speaks to us through the millennia and says, not you brood of vipers, which we could say that. I could say that to you, you brood of vipers. And yes, you would say, well, uh, that, that applies to somebody else. That applies to somebody else. That applies to somebody. But the truth is, it applies to me. It applies to you. It applies to us. We have work to do on how to bear good fruit, for bearing good fruit. And what does good fruit look like? For John, it looks like living a life justified. So if we live a life that is justified within um, uh, the context of our lives, for the people, it's if you have two cloaks, you need to hand one to a brother or sister who needs a cloak. If you have uh, two tunics, same thing, hand one to somebody who needs one. For the tax collectors, don't collect anything more than what you're supposed to collect. Collect just what you're, what you're supposed to collect. Tax collectors were allowed to collect taxes plus an additional portion to pay themselves. But that's not what happened. Tax collectors would charge taxes and then another tax that they would, that they would extort from the people to pay themselves. And what about uh, uh, the soldiers? The soldiers are supposed to do their job and enjoy their wage wages and not, uh, not complain or grumble or, um, or extort travelers for protection or, or, um, or take stuff that wasn't theirs. They were supposed to do their job and take what is given to them and live within their means. And for, for John, that's just the beginning of what it means to, to bear good fruit to be responsible to a way of life that doesn't cost, is, is not lived 
at the expense of other people. So um, for us, it may be um, if, we, if we're living in, our, in the comfort of, of middle suburbia and our comfort comes at the expense of somebody who doesn't have what we have, John is calling us to share what we have, uh, to give. And you guys have done this. I see this. I, I just was over um, with, uh, with our uh, parishioner, Jam Corston, uh, counting all of the socks and gloves and toboggans and, and shampoos and deodorants and toothpaste that's all going to go to uh, the, the uh, Greater Dallas Coalition to go down to our homeless folks down in South Dallas. That is a, that is a true sign of what it means to bear fruit. That, that, is, that is a true sign of what it means to bear fruit. And we need to continue this bearing good fruit uh, not for ourselves, not for our righteousness, even though that's part of what it means to live a life. This is just living into, into the Christian um, call. This is not something extraordinary. We're not doing works righteousness. We're not doing this for our salvation. We're just doing it because that's what, that's what God has called us to do. And I want to, I want to end with this, with this note. John's just the messenger. John doesn't deliver, he delivers the message. He's like the mailman, he delivers the mail. He is not the one that authors the letters that are opened here. So when John says, you brood of vipers, that doesn't come from his lips, that comes from God's lips. And he also delivers this message to us. And here is the joy that I bring to you today. There is one coming, one of which I am not, I'm not, worthy to untie his sandals. I baptize you with water. He will baptize you with fire and the Spirit. Folks, that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That is who we're getting ready for this Advent. Now, when, when the prophets of old were talking, they expected stuff to happen right then. Not necessarily did it happen right then. When John was talking, the, the axe was at the root, sure enough, because Jesus was walking towards them as John is speaking. And we see this, that John uh, baptizes uh, Jesus uh, as a sign that we also need to baptize to be uh, part of this membership of, of Christ's body. And not necessarily for a baptism of repentance, but a baptism of cleansing um, ourselves and joining into uh, the greater community. Guys, um, this message that comes to us today, we've heard over and over again. You've heard people talk on this over and over again. What should I do? What should I do? I should examine my life and see where there's areas of growth, where there's areas of improvement, where there's areas of metanoia, of turning and going the other way, away from things that separate me from the love of God. I can't answer that for you. You have to answer that for yourself. But if you can't find something, maybe you're not looking hard enough. I have said this before, um, in, in a life even well lived, um, we, we stumble and that's okay. It's okay. Here's your opportunity to say, God changed my life, alter me. If you're going down a path that doesn't need to be um, uh, ventured down, uh, that, that's not bearing good fruit. Uh, God wants you to have hope and peace and joy. If you don't have hope and you don't have peace and you don't have joy, then the fruit that's being bared may not be of God and we need to examine that. Let me help you. Let Deacon Phil help you. Let us help you with that. If you're struggling um, this season and in this season of COVID, our desert wandering, um, this is where we encounter God in the desert. We see it in the Bible over and over again. The people of God encounter God in the wilderness places, not, not in the middle of the city, but in, in the middle of their wilderness. If, you're, if you find yourself today in the middle of that wilderness, reach out, reach out to, to, to me, reach out to Deacon Phil, reach out to any of the staff of St. James, reach out to a pastor that you know and trust. Reach out to a family member that you know is a prayer warrior. Just reach out. Because you too need to experience the love of God and the love of Christ and experience hope, joy, hope, peace, and joy. Hope, peace, and joy. I wish for you today that you will experience the love of God in a mighty way. 
that the Spirit will move in you, in us, so that we may also produce good fruit. And in that, we experience God's majesty and might through hope, through peace, and through joy. May you be blessed on this day, Third Advent. Amen. Let us continue our service with the profession of faith uh, in the Nicene Creed found in your bulletin or on page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form six, found on page 392 of the Book of Common Prayer or in your service bulletin. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our, our families, families, friends, friends and, neighbors, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. alone. For this community, the nation, and the world, for, for all who work for justice, freedom, freedom and, and peace, peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the, for the victims, victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the, the sick, the friendless and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for, for all who proclaim the gospel, and all who seek the truth, for Michael, our presiding bishop, and George and Michael, our bishops, and for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God and His Church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We pray especially for those on our parish prayer list. We pray for those, for our police and firefighters, and for the men and women of our military. We pray for those who are suffering under coronavirus, physically, emotionally, spiritually, or economically, and for those who are caring for them. We pray for our doctors and nurses, and for those who are working to find better treatments and cures for the coronavirus. We pray at this time, for the Lord of the year, for the, especially for the hungry, the homeless, the incarcerated, those separated from their families, and those who find themselves without hope. Help us to remember them, and help us to remember to care for them. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. For St. James and his ministries. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Especially you, French. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most, most merciful, merciful Father. Father. In, in your, your compassion, compassion forgive us our sins, sins known and unknown. Things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you and forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us greet one another. Peace. And peace be unto you. Good morning, St. James, and welcome to our online offering on this third advent. We are coming to you recorded today. Um, I want to share with you that next week um, we intend to uh, come to you live. And I so hope if you have enjoyed this recorded service that you will certainly enjoy our, our live uh, offering. Um, you will hear our choir and, um, and our organ um, live. You are going to be able to see the people in the pews um, you are going to be able to hear us speaking uh, to them on right now. I've got a, a iPhone sitting on a pedestal on a, on a tripod. We have uh, different cam camera angles uh, for you. It's going to be amazing. Um, we've, we've previewed this. Uh, we previewed this yesterday in our space, and it was just magnificent and marvelous. And I'm so excited that we're going to be having this offering. So look for that. We're going to be offering it next Sunday on uh, Facebook and on YouTube. And uh, those will be captured, and so you can watch them at our, at our start service times at 10 o'clock. Or you can watch them um, at your leisure anytime uh, after that 10 o'clock service is over. Also, I want to bring to you... Uh, the blessing that um, our Christmas Eve services, our, uh, our four o'clock pageant uh, and, and Holy Eucharist will be brought to you live, streamed live. You'll get to see the wandering sheep and the, uh, the, 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 grazing, uh, the, the grazing cattle and donkeys and even our little angels. You'll get to see all of that live as it happens. And um, we're also gonna offer our seven o'clock Lessons and Carols live as well. So you'll get to see the wonderful um, choir doing their thing uh, for us, singing the beautiful carols. You'll get to, uh, you'll get to experience uh, the readings done at our lectern and uh, all live on Facebook and on YouTube. So please, please, if you can't make it to our space, please join us on Facebook, YouTube, spread it wide that we are going to be uh, live and doing this live stream to all your friends that aren't in the Dallas area. Tell them that you want them to see what your church, St. James, is up to and uh, tell them they can tune into us every week from that point on and we will be live uh, for them uh, to, to view as well as for you. So let's get to the announcements. If you have your bulletin, um, our, our announcements start on page uh, 14 this week in our bulletin and it starts out with a QR code so you can sign up to uh, give blood next Sunday. Um, if you are capable, if you are able um, and they will take your blood, please sign up and come down. Uh, we'll have two buses in our, in our parking lots uh, here and at uh, Lake Highlands uh, Church next door to us. We'll have two buses so we'll get you in and out as quickly as possible but you need to sign up for a time. That's, that's next week. Uh, we have uh, poinsettias that uh, need to be dedicated. So if you would like to dedicate a poinsettia, please reach out to Linda. You can shoot her an email, send us a check, $10 each poinsettia that you would like to donate on Christmas Eve. That will be in our bulletin. Those donations, uh, those uh, dedications will be in our bulletin. And we so thank you for helping us this year with, uh, with beautifying our space because those poinsettias will be everywhere and they will be absolutely gorgeous. And you're gonna get to see it live. Just saying. Hey, uh, we have a Karen Christmas tree. Uh, it is next door in the parish hall. Um, it has all kinds of angels that need to be adopted. Please, please. We're talking about bearing good fruit in our sermon today. This is a way that you can you can uh, do that bearing of good fruit of, of good fruit. Uh, adopt an angel and um, and get that back to us. Um, it tells you all the information in your um, in your uh, bulletin along with um, any. Uh, questions that you might have, you can uh, direct those to, uh, to our favorite uh, Miss Jenny uh, Keeling and she'll be able to answer all those questions for you. Please, please, please do that. Um, we have uh, our 
Christmas care package stuffing of the of the bags today. If you would like to uh, to head on down here, uh, we'll stuff them right after the 10:30 after this service. And so, uh, if you're close enough, and we'll come down and stuff some bags. Please come on down. We love that. We're going to get those out uh, to our folks uh, with the uh, Greater uh, Dallas Coalition down to our homeless folks down in South Dallas uh, tomorrow. Uh, Mr. Cecil is going to come by and pick those up and take those down and deliver those. So we are so happy uh, to be a blessing. We're joining with four, uh, three other churches uh, to provide um, almost 200 uh, bags to uh, homeless folks, and that just scratches the uh, surface. And by the way, we partnered with our friends at the school, our parents with the school, and so if you're watching and our school parent, thank you for joining with us uh, on this great outreach ministry. Once again, that bearing good fruit comes right into play in this, and we sure appreciate that. Listen, all of your other announcements are, are in your bulletin. Please take a look at those. And if you have any questions, all of our contact information here at the church is on the back of the bulletin. Uh, reach out to any of us. Uh, my cell phone is there. Uh, my email is there. Uh, you can reach Miss Linda. You can reach Jared. You can reach us all. Everything, every, all of our contact information is right there on the back of that bulletin. Please uh, take advantage of that. We sure appreciate it. Listen, uh, if you are celebrating a birthday today, I would love to say a prayer with you. Uh, I'm turning to page 8 or 9. I'm going to have to look for sure. Uh, it begins on page 8 and finishes on page 9. If you will join me in a birthday prayer, uh, if you're not celebrating a birthday, if you're celebrating a birthday, let us pray for you. And let's do that now. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up when they fall and in their hearts. May thy peace which passeth understanding abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Reach out to us. Give us, shoot us a text or shoot us an email. Let us know that you're celebrating a birthday so we, um, we can uh, uh, reach out back out to you and offer you our blessings and our, and our congratulations. We'd love to hear from you. Um, if you're celebrating an anniversary, uh, we also would like to say a prayer for you, and we would also invite you to reach out to us. Let us know that you're celebrating your anniversary. Which anniversary it is? I always like to ask which anniversary it is. So please reach out and let us know that you're celebrating your anniversary and know that we will uh, say a prayer for you in staff meeting, but also that we'll, uh, we'll, we want to say a prayer for you right now. So please, uh, if you can, stand up, join right hands, and let me say a prayer. Gracious and heavenly Father, we are thankful for the Institute of Marriage. In it, you show us the best of Christ's marriage to the church, through it, we're able to grow not only closer to each other, but closer to you, most importantly. And Lord, I ask your blessing upon these, your couples, that they may, through your many blessings, enjoy many more anniversaries. And this we ask through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And to our couples, the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Happy anniversary. You may kiss your bride or the bride may kiss the groom. Kiss each other. That'd be great. Listen, uh, we have a lot more coming up. If you have your wafers, uh, get those out, those consecrated wafers. If you would like a consecrated wa wafer, wafer, excuse me, it's hard to say, consecrated wafer. If you can't make it here, if you're homebound, reach out to us. All of our contact information on the back. Let us bring it to you. We have a, a lay Eucharistic visitors that can bring it and drop it right off to you so you can have that for our morning worship services, especially if you would like it for Christmas Eve, reach out and let us bring that to you. Um, and if you're, if you're not close enough to us, I know we have some folks out in California that are watching this. We have some folks in Canada that are watching it. I really don't know how far this reaches. I know I have a friend in, in Tennessee that watches this. If you guys would like to have um, communion sent to you, would you please reach out to me and my email address is on the back of this. This Just shoot me an email and, and let me know uh, that you would like communion and I will, uh, I will send some to you so you can have that, you can enjoy um, consecrated uh, communion with us as we uh, provide this service coming live to you starting next week. All right.
Uh, if you don't have wafers today, please know that Father DJ is uh, still coming to us from Florida and uh, offering the prayer for spiritual communion. Um, we, we, say, uh, we say thank you to Father DJ. Uh, this week will be his last week of doing that because we'll be live next week and won't have that particular um, offering. But we are so blessed that Father DJ um, and Sam have been such a part, a great part of this ministry to bring you this online offering. And we will, we, we definitely wish them all the blessings in the world. And um, we're gonna miss you guys terribly. Please come see us when you're in town. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night, he was handed over to suffering and death. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me.
Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We invite you at home, if you do not have communion, to pray the prayer of spiritual communion with Father DJ. For those of you who have communion, we offer you to take that now. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us pray. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are given this day, I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you, Let me serve you in this life until by your grace I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you, as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.